Mr. Chairman. I call the honourable member Mark Mitchell. Is that the question yeah. be now? Mr. Put? Chairman. Um, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman. I call the honourable member Stephen Browning. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair, it's very disturbing to see the changes uh, that's been put forward by this bill, particularly uh, by Simon Bridges and his um, attempts to basically stifle uh, free speech and efforts of communities to look out for what's actually important to them, what they've proven to him uh, is important to them. And I'll talk of uh, Anadarko uh, in this point. The um, minister came to Kaikoura, uh, which is in my sort of home turf, to talk to iwi, to talk to the local community along with Anadarko and some of the officials that we see um, from the minerals um, officials, basically from the minerals uh, part of our bureaucracy, who came along and were theoretically there to listen and to um, make good sense of what the community's concerns were. What does he do? He comes along and he then attempts to ensure that their voice, that their protest in the future to such um, uh, exploration, such attempts to um, do stuff that could have devastating effect in their uh, territory is, is totally um, dumped down. It's a, an atrocious part of his activity that he would come there, front up, attempt to charm the people and then take away their rights as such. However, what is uh, really concerning beyond that is that this bill uh, um, it does this throughout the country, not just um, for the areas around Kaikoura, it's the areas in, that I'm familiar with in the Marlborough Sounds, it's right through the areas in Coromandel, just right through this country that this government's prepared to put up and to um, give, uh, really limit what can um, be protected in, in our environment. And I can think of, uh, it's inter interesting to see that the Department of Conservation is further reduced in its capacity through this, where it's been reduced consistently for some time. And, and I'll use some examples uh, in the Marlborough Sounds area where we've had uh, significant um, help to the community from the Department of Conservation from putting some resources into identifying the biodiversity issues um, around aquaculture and into in some of our precious places out there, around Mount Stokes and the likes as well. But what has happened more and more as their resources have been pulled and this ministerial influence or cabinet influence that we see uh, about to come in much harder on this bill, we've seen that they have actually reduced more and more to the point that they weren't even doing submissions on important uh, applications that were definitely going to have effects uh, on very important uh, biodiversity areas in the, in the Marlborough Sounds. Uh, for this bill to come up, that actually reduces that significantly further on top of the cuts that the Department of Conservation uh, has just had, it is appalling. It's absolutely appalling. What we'd hope and, and expect would be that the ministers that have spoken here, including Nick Smith uh, previously, who speaks so strongly about balance out there. What is that balance? The balance is about bursting in over what the local community has said is important when they've actually zoned areas to make sure that um, certain developments don't happen after absolute full consultation with the community, including industry, including different users, including tourism, including iwi. And we've come to those conclusions. And what does this government do? It comes in over the top 
and allows and promotes development in areas that the communities decided was not appropriate. This is absolutely appalling and we've got a further extension being moved here and in other bills that this government seems to have uh, forthcoming. I'm not quite sure what the government expects of the community when they keep getting hounded like this. I call the Honourable Member Alfred Naro. I move that the question be now put. The question is that the question...